One of the most fascinating aspects in the sport of boxing is its unique ability to shine the spotlight on exceptional athletes of every size and shape. Oh, the big right hand. As such, the industry is divided into 17 groups of competitors. And depending on their skills, youth and experience, any weight class has the potential to captivate its audiences and produce the brightest of stars. One division in particular, despite its vast array of talent, has been cut like a knife through butter by two of its most remarkable of champions. My, my, what a shot! In normal times, American boxing is more than just a two-man show. But in Errol the Truth Spence and Terence Bud Crawford, the nation boasts two standout stars with exceptional abilities. Both sit atop of not only the most decorated division in boxing, but also occupy the highest of places in the sport's mythical pound-for-pound -pound rankings. Introducing the truth! The slightly younger of the two excels in size and strength, but is also never short of the technical proficiency that systematically breaks down and destroys his opponents. Rib-crunching body shots, an educated jab and a ruthlessly efficient work rate has seen him capture three out of the four welterweight world titles. And the man standing before his undisputed mission not only holds the last remaining title, but perhaps also has the antidote to his expanding dominance. Best in the world! He may lack the size and power of his fierce rival, but he compensates with a chameleon-like ability to adjust to any style in the ring. And with a spiteful approach of his own, is on a menacing 10-fight knockout streak. We've known for a long time how big this fight could be. It's finally here. What are the feelings? What are the emotions? We're getting what we wanted. Both fighters have been on a collision course for several years. And having finally overcome a prolonged period of negotiations, are finally scheduled for a July 29th showdown at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. You know we Jamaican, man. We smoke bud. Y'all, hey. You already know how that go. It's hey. legal in Vegas, too, so we're going to smoke your ass up. I'm a fan of Spitz. You know what I mean? I'm just going to kick his ass when we fight. Damn, I like that. But listen. Undoubtedly, this is the best fight that can be made in the entire sport and one that will settle the hotly disputed debate of who truly is the number one welterweight in the world. Welcome to the Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford Fight Countdown. To understand the significance of the most in-demand fight at welterweight, we begin the story with the division's longest reigning current champion. Errol Spence Jr. Unified welterweight champion of the world, the truth. Before turning professional in 2012, the promising welterweight enjoyed a solid amateur career, amassing 135 wins out of 147 bouts. Oh God! Along the way, he won the 2009 Golden Gloves and an additional three consecutive United States national championships before finally representing his country at the 2012 London Olympics. United States of America, Errol Spence. Errol Spence from Long Island in his very first Olympic Games tournament. The success and admiration he garnered from his boxing peers and coaches laid the ideal foundations for a professional journey in which he was already heralded as one of the brightest prospects in the sport. Such a talent would deservedly capture the immediate attention of boxing's most influential manager, Al Heyman, who had already masterminded the latter half of Floyd Mayweather's exceptional career. Errol Spence, like I said, I, you know, I told you, you guys about Errol Spence a long time ago. I told you guys, he's a hell of a fighter. Man. And immediately from his debut in 2012, it was clear that Spence's strengths were better suited to the professional game. The hall to the bound, your winner by KO victory in his professional debut. Errol Spence Jr. 
the Southpaw's measured aggression, pulverizing body attacks and indifference to inflicting punishment, saw him rack up 16 knockouts in his first 19 wins. Two good body shot right to the head, that's it. Eerie accounts of world champions facing the same wrath in sparring sessions also began emerging from behind the closed doors of gyms up and down the country. Fighter, and that guy gave me, he gave me some good work, and I, need, and I needed that. And on April of 2016, the then 26-year-old would perfectly demonstrate his penchant for violence when he faced his first world-class opponent, Chris Algieri. A former light welterweight champion whose only shortcomings came against the great Manny Pacquiao and the highly regarded Amir Khan. And here we go, Errol Spence, this is his biggest test. He told us that yesterday. But in just five viciously one-sided rounds, he would be swept away by an Errol Spence intent on making a statement. If ever American fans were seeking the new heir to Floyd Mayweather's recently vacated welterweight throne, they need not look any further. Despite being just three years into his professional career, the Texan resident was already setting his sights on a world title fight. And four months later, he secured his mandatory position by delivering yet another ferocious knockout against Leonard Bundu. Oh, and he goes out! He is out! You made the motion after the win. You want a shot at that title. What's your message for Kell Brook, the current title holder? You know, if he's not going to fight me, then he needs to vacate and I fight somebody else. But I definitely want that IBF title shot this year. The man standing in the way of Spence's world title dreams, however, was Britain's Kell Brook. A well-poised boxer puncher undefeated at the weight and the proud owner of the IBF championship. Spence is going to get his chance to take this belt. We're going to see. We'll stay in the middle of the ring then. Don't run. Come on then. Don't run. I stay in the middle of the ring. I'm going to hold you to it too. I will. Stay in the middle of the ring. I'm going to hold you to it too. We're going to see. It was a fascinating matchup in which two immensely skilled powerhouses were meeting at important junctures of their careers. For the Briton, it was a high-risk, high-reward encounter that could ignite the box office appeal in his country that he desperately yearned. And for Spence, stepping into the lion's den to capture the first jewel in his welterweight crown would mark the beginnings of other lucrative matchups closer to home. The fight began with Brooks' experience and craftiness keeping the challenger at bay. His well-timed counters and educated jab maintained the home crowd's optimism. But by the third round, it was becoming increasingly clear to Brooke and his supporters that the visitor was indeed the real deal he was cracked up to be. A sudden change in pace and aggression from Errol Spence saw him reinforce his skills with a fierce determination. And detecting the waning resistance from the champion, he began applying unrelenting assaults to the body combined with clever jabs and hooks upstairs. They both, both corners get more confident with shots. Beautiful combination by Errol Spence Jr. That's Spence now with a scintillating combination. By the eighth round, the physical damage was on display as the swelling on Brooks' left eye provided a clear marker for Spence to target. Two rounds later, the champion touched the canvas for the first time, after being pushed against the ropes by a flurry of heavy punches. And though Brook survived the referee's count, he failed to do the same in the next round as the American went for the final kill. It was a remarkable, gutsy performance to give birth to the latest star in American boxing. The new IBF champion of the world, and widely considered by experts to be the future of the welterweight division. But, as is often the case in boxing, whenever there is a coronation of a new star, there exists also a diametric force to counter the narrative. And Spence's crowning moment 
would soon be followed by the division's arrival of a new pound-for-pound -pound sensation. Waiting ride of Omaha, Nebraska, USA, Terrence Bud. Terrence Bud Crawford, an ambidextrous switch hitter from Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, and one of the most versatile fighters in all of boxing. A two-weight world champion that recently achieved undisputed status after wiping out an entire light welterweight division with ease. He was now stepping up to Errol Spencer's division with the aim of conquering his third weight class. And having identified the Texan as one of the main forces at 147 pounds, he immediately confronted him on a showdown for the future. Talk to me. Well, Don't tell talk your nigga to be quiet. Talk to me. Tell your nigga to be talk quiet. Talk to me. Tell your nigga to be All right, quiet. Now you talk to me. Tell your nigga to be Back quiet. Back to what we were talking about. Whatever. Try that body it shot, man. I'm not going ah. to stop you. <laughs> Terence Crawford's competitive nature and cold-hearted demeanor come as no surprise considering the rough education of his formative years at the CW Boxing Club, where Bloods, Crips and other gang members learned their trade. We've discussed it in Terence Crawford fights in the past. Yes, he's a slick boxer, he's a stylist, he's highly skillful, but he's also a mean dude in there. He would eventually go on to win three national amateur championships and become the country's highest ranked lightweight. And in March of 2008, the 20 year old began his professional journey in the veiled small hall shows across America. But it would be a life changing event outside of the ring that made Crawford truly channel his energy towards the sport. Four fights into his pro career, and due to fight on ESPN to make himself known to wider TV audiences, the lightweight prospect fell victim to a near-fatal shooting. Omaha police say one person was shot near 55th and Ames. Their injuries are considered serious. The shooting happened around midnight. No word on any arrests, and the investigation is ongoing. Miraculously, the bullet ricocheted off his skull rather than lodging inside. Covered in his own blood, he somehow recovered his senses to drive himself to the hospital. His quick-tempered impulses vowed vengeance, but the disciplined pugilist in him never allowed him to follow through, and instead he developed a renewed determination to rise through the professional ranks and become Omaha's first champion boxer in almost a century. His career first began picking up momentum when, 13 fights in, he got the opportunity to showcase his talents on a small, top-ranked show in Denver. A second-round knockout here was then followed by more impressive stoppage victories. And in March of 2013, the young fighter received an unexpected opportunity to mark his breakout performance. Crawford's manager, Cameron Duncan, received a call from top-ranked chairman Bob Arum, asking him to offer his unbeaten charge as a late replacement to face Colombian knockout artist Bradis Prescott. Prescott, already famed for brutally upsetting another rising star in Amir Khan, caused concern in Duncan who felt his fighter didn't yet have the required experience to step up in weight against a bigger, dangerous opponent. But the self-assured 25-year-old pleaded with his manager to permit the fight, and in front of a Las Vegas crowd at the Mandalay Bay, stepped through the ropes to deliver a masterful 10-round performance. But what a show for Terence Crawford. He's combined movement, fluidity, tremendous awareness, the ability to fight from two different stances, great counter-punching skill, to thoroughly dominate Freitas Prescott, at least from our perspective. Such was the dominance that Crawford secured his place on further high-profiled top-ranked shows televised on the premium network HBO. To me like he can box point back to the floor. His outstanding technical abilities with a high ring IQ then convinced his handlers to level up his progression by sending him overseas to immediately challenge for his first world title. The Scotsman Ricky Burns was the WBO lightweight champion and treasured greatly by his nation.
10,000 fans packed out the Scottish Exhibition Centre in Glasgow to create a harsh reception for the American daring to dethrone their champion. But Top Rank's unflinching confidence in Terence Crawford was matched equally by another supreme display, proving to the British fans he was every bit as good in the flesh as his publicity had claimed. The new Terence Crawford, world champion of the world! A moment of history for the American. American boxing now had another star on their hands, and one that was encapsulating many of the same qualities of their past greats. What does it mean to you picking up that title? It means everything. We ain't had no champion in Omaha, Nebraska in a century. The plan was then set in motion to bring him back to his hometown of Omaha to showcase the city's first world title fight in 42 years. And not only did Crawford draw in a raucous crowd of 11,000 fans, but he also attracted over 1.2 million live viewers on HBO. The opponent he would showcase his abilities against was the immensely talented Yuri Yorkis Gamboa. Unbeaten in 23 fights and a once unified world champion, the Cuban was regarded as one of the sport's most gifted operators. And in the first few rounds, it was obvious why. Gamboa has the kind of speed that upsets your expectations. Like that, like that, one, two with a right hand landing over the top. The nifty five foot five challenger bedazzled Crawford with blazing hand and foot speed, sweeping the first three rounds as the champion tried unraveling the puzzle before him. Well, but Crawford landed a little left hand oh, and switched to southpaw. But Crawford's decision in the fourth round to turn southpaw and press the action began turning the tide in his favor. And by the following round, he had successfully roped Gamboa into a firefight, resulting in the first knockdown of the bout. What was meant to be a tactical boxing match turned into a tactical brawl, forcing Gamboa to further forfeit his hand and foot speed advantages and walking into another knockdown. Sensing the victory, Crawford persisted with the intensity to force two more knockdowns to eventually finish the fight in the ninth round. A fight of the year candidate delivered on the ideal occasion, putting his 11,000 home fans into a complete frenzy. Crawford's reputation as one of the best fighters in the world was now hitting new levels. But in an attempt to break into the mythical pound-for-pound -pound lists, he decided to move up a division to light welterweight. And it would be here where he'd eventually be recognized by many as the number one fighter in the entire sport. Terence Crawford in terms of punches landed. And that was, might be the only one that matters so far. Exactly. Over a period of two years, the entire 140-pound weight class would be wiped out with absolute ease. Crawford, just with surgical precision, drops Delorme again. He began by defeating Tomas Delorme for the WBO title via a sixth-round TKO. And after two successful knockout defenses against Derry Jean and Hank Lundy, he was pitted in a unification fight against the WBC champion, Victor Postol. The Ukrainian, undefeated in 28 fights, was coming off a career highlight win when he upset the Argentinian knockout artist Lucas Matisse. And on paper, he was the toughest opponent standing in the way of Crawford's plans to conquer the division. How to break the will of his opponents, which he has done in the last two fights. Can he do the same with someone as skilled as Bud Crawford? But despite standing at 5 foot 11 and holding a three inch reach advantage, he proved to be no match for Crawford, who once again excelled in expert ring generalship and management of distance. Ceremonies a couple of weeks ago, and even so, that's going to be scored as a knockdown. He doesn't talk a lot of trash. Oh, oh, oh what a what a great counterpunch! This performance alone boosted the unified champion status amongst the elite of the sport, and with the WBC and WBO straps in his possession, 
he was setting his sights on the two remaining belts. TKO defences against John Molina and Felix Diaz put Crawford back on his knockout streak as he also began developing a strong reputation as one of the best finishers in the game. And in August of 2017, his crowning moment finally came when he faced off against the undefeated Julius Ndongo, who was in possession of the IBF and WBA versions of the world's title. Seen too much of him. Oh, what a left hand! That is an absolute shocker! Despite the Namibian's fine run of form, he also would be no match for Crawford, who at this point was already the clear favourite to take the undisputed light welterweight crown. Ndongo managed to survive the second round knockdown, but in the third he could do nothing to escape a debilitating left hand to the body to send him crashing to the canvas in agony. With a resounding victory, Crawford made his case for the pound-for-pound pound number one status and became only the second fighter in the four-belt era to unify the major sanctioning organization titles. A truly rare achievement in the 13 years since the great Bernard Hopkins earned the same accolade with a similarly destructive body shot against Oscar de la Hoya. He finished it in sensational fashion. Boxing's first undisputed champion in any weight class in over a decade. At 140 pounds, however, Crawford was now a champion without a challenger. And the need to jump up another division to chase down bigger and more formidable foes was becoming increasingly apparent. His undisputed crowning came at the exact same time as Errol Spence's inauguration in the weight class higher up. The Texans' impressive victory overseas earned him rave reviews and was being considered the future of the welterweight division. But with Terence Crawford's new arrival, there now existed a very serious threat to those lofty expectations. And already in conversations across social media, punditry desks and gyms across the world, a mouth-watering showdown between the two stars was brewing. The ever-present political divide in the sport, however, put the two fighters on diverging paths for the time being. As part of the PBC promotional group, Errol Spence was targeting an in-house megafight with fellow star Keith Thurman, the then undefeated WBA and WBC welterweight champion. And still champion of the world! And Terence Crawford, meanwhile, was reaching for crossover stardom with his promotional stablemate, the great Manny Pacquiao, who held the WBO version of the world's title. Both fighters were under the top rank banner, and a customary passing of the torch fight seemed inevitable. And no! Yeah! Oh my! But with the aging Filipino legend suffering an unexpected and controversial loss at the hands of Jeff Horn, Crawford's dream pay-per-view fight suddenly vanished. And in June of 2018, he would instead take his frustrations out on Pacquiao's victor, with a dominant ninth round stoppage victory. Left hand, right hook, uppercut, sends him back, another left hand! And now the new, undefeated, WBO Welterweight Champion of the World! By the summer of 2018, Terence Crawford had become a three-weight world champion. And now, as a welterweight holding the WBO trinket, was standing on equal terms with Errol Spence, the IBF world champion. The demand for a showdown between the two was intensifying further. All right, 147, a lot of talent. Who does Terence Crawford want? I want the other champions. I want the big fights. Bob, let's make it happen. Right. All right. There it is, a directive to the promoter, Bob Arum, to make the big fights at 147. Now, the, 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 the big fight everybody wants to see the, is Earl Spence. You think, that, you think that unification fight could happen? Oh, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Despite calls from the fans to begin negotiations, Earl Spence would pour cold water over such talks by reminding the public of the harsh truth. Like, we are, me and Terrence Crawford on this side of the streets. He's just signed with ESPN. I don't fight for ESPN. I fight for Showtime with Fox. The two fighters, despite their equal standing in the sport, belonged to opposing promoters and TV networks. 
Alright, how you gonna get that fight when he just signed with ESPN? I'm not going to ESPN at all. I'm not going to ESPN at all. The gap between the two rivals was further exasperated by the fact that under the PBC promotional banner, Spence's access to higher profiled welterweight opponents was abundantly deep. Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, your Dennis Ugas, and others alike made for lucrative alternatives that brought less risk. And thus existed a strong incentive to remain where he was and a further Crawford showdown to a later date. The big money fights and the fights that is really gonna get made and the fights I'm really gonna make is if it shows how I'm in Fox Sport, in Fox. That's the fights I'm gonna make. The IBF champion's first two defenses came against former light welterweight champion Lamont Peterson and the undefeated Carlos Acampo, both of whom were dispatched with relative ease. Gets dropped with one second left in the opening round. And in an attempt to boost Spence into a box office fighter, BBC offered up Mikey Garcia as his next opponent. The four-weight world champion was an immensely gifted fighter in his own right, but one that was being asked to jump up two weight divisions to mount a challenge. Mikey Garcia said, everyone tells me this fight is too risky. That's why I wanted to do it. The discrepancy in size was on full display, and the bout turned out to be a predictably one-sided affair. Harold Spence in round nine, landing 51 punches, most by a Garcia opponent in 20 fights. The commercial success of the event, however, proved to be a shrewd business move. And his expanding presence in the division then took another giant step as he faced the WBC champion, Sean Porter, in another high-profiled PBC fight. The packed Staples Arena audience in Los Angeles watched the thrilling action unfold as the two titleists created one of the most exciting fights of the year. The staple centre on its feet for both of these two, and what an ovation they'll get! What a fight! What a fight! What a fight! What a fight. What a fight. What a fight. By the end of the 12 rounds, the courageous Sean Porter had given Errol Spence the most physically taxing fight of his career so far. But a split decision in favour of Spence made the undefeated Texan the deserved victor as he became the new unified champion of the division. Two out of the four welterweight titles were now in his possession. And plans to capture the third trinket were already underway, as two months earlier, the great Manny Pacquiao hit unprecedented levels in his remarkable career by defeating the unbeaten Keith Thurman for the WBA world's title. Boxing's pride of the Philippines, By now, the Filipino icon had departed from top-ranked promotions and was no longer a stablemate of Terence Crawford. He had instead joined forces with Al Heyman, thus transferring the passing of the torch opportunity to one of his fighters. In the aging Manny Pacquiao existed the golden ticket which every welterweight dreamed of securing. A chance to transform their careers to new heights should they earn a victory on his name. All three in favor of the winner, Manny Pacman. And standing at the front of the queue was Errol Spence, with the fight all but signed and sealed. That was until a life-threatening incident derailed all his plans. Now to the video you saw first on the CBS DFW social media channels. A violent crash overnight as a Ferrari flipped on a Dallas street. In that car was Errol Spence Jr. He's the boxing champion from DeSoto. Spence survived the crash but is in rough shape at a Dallas hospital right now. A high-speed car crash in October of 2019 resulted in multiple facial lacerations. But miraculously, no broken bones or fractures and the welterweight champion was soon ready to resume his career after a short hiatus. However, despite an impressive return bout against Danny Garcia in the following year, and the mega fight with Manny Pacquiao rescheduled, Spence's career hit another setback. A retinal tear in the eye caused in sparring forced him to return to the sidelines once again, watching helplessly as his dream fight with Manny Pacquiao faded into dust. Your 
The Filipino's unexpected loss to Spencer's replacement, Jordanis Ugas, meant that the Texans' three-belt achievement would be far less climatic than he originally hoped for. The Cuban, although a worthy title holder, brought nowhere near the same prestige and legacy as the Filipino great. And on April of 2022, stepped through the ropes to put his WBA world title on the line against Spence's IBF and WBC trinkets. But despite being a live underdog in the lead up to the fight, it would be the hometown hero to show the difference in both skill and physical strength. Fighting at his preferred distance on the inside, Spence landed various power shots to the body and upstairs to confuse Ugas and take him out of his comfort zone. Round by round, he turned up the dial in a remarkable demonstration of high work rate and intensity. All of his greatest qualities on display as the systematic beating forced the Cuban's eye to swell shut. The advice of the ringside doctor convinced the referee to wave the fight off midway through round 10. And this one is over! Errol Spence Jr. has stopped your Dennis Ugas! Errol Spence had now captured three out of the four world's titles. And now the WBC, WBA, and IBF Unified Welterweight Champion of the World! His exceptional run of unification fights were great in their achievement, and provided for a much needed cleanup from the various titleists that can exist in a division. But it also had the conflicting effect of driving a greater wedge between him and his long term rival. By not being part of the PBC monopoly of welterweights, Terence Crawford was vetoed from fighting the same caliber of opponents that Errol Spence had been sharing the ring with. As such, his reign as the WBO champion was forced to endure a more mundane chapter by comparison. His successful dethroning of Jeff Horn was followed by a defense against the unbeaten Jose Benavides Jr., once a highly regarded prospect touted to become a future star of the sport. Focus on your fight for you not make it to your fight. Focus on your fight for you not make it to your fight. I said put your purse on him, mother. You'll be it. You'll be it. The bad blood initiated in the lead up eventually hit fever pitch in the fight week at the official weigh-in. Andre, how does a fighter like Benavidez control his emotions in what's been a very emotional week? Oh. Oh. And the temperamental man from Omaha eventually unleashed his fury over the course of 12 rounds, before closing the show with a sensational uppercut. The destructive performance here, however, did little to entice the other major 147 pounders to challenge him. And so his team instead looked towards the faded stars of the past to keep his campaign of defenses invigorated. Oh, he scores a knockdown! The once heralded Amir Khan was comfortably beaten in April of 2019, and a competitive defense against Egis Kavalauskas was followed by a routine win against the former IBF welterweight champion, Kel Brook. His combinations go beautiful right here. And the chance gets to him. Despite being dominant in all of his title defenses and going from strength to strength in his abilities in the ring, frustrations with the political aspect of the sport were clearly present. Man, listen, like I told you in the interviews, I can't put a gun to the promoters ahead and make them make the fight. Through no fault of his own, the WBO champion's welterweight resume by comparison to Errol Spence, was severely lacking in elite scalps. Hey, he's a great fighter, things like that, but you can't put him to me. I'm a way better fighter than Terence Crawford. Who has he fought? But after being blacklisted for the better part of three years, his chance to shine finally came in the form of his mandatory challenger, Sean Porter. But something on my neck was tapping me, saying, hey, you, you, uh, you can't escape this guy. You, you might have to get with this guy. And unlike his PBC stablemates, the former two-time world champion possessed the courage to cross over and challenge Terence Crawford for his WBO crown. I always looked at it as, as an opportunity to, to do what everybody else wouldn't do. In the ring with me, he's not going to have his way. He's not going to be able to be comfortable the way that everyone else has allowed him to be comfortable. For Porter, it was his last attempt to become a world champion once again. 
and for Crawford, it was the opportune moment to show the world why his rivals had been fearing him throughout this entire time. Once we signed that contract, the switch turned on. We're here now and I can't wait to Saturday, display my talent and look good doing it. The two fighters stepped through the ropes in November of 2021. Porter, this time with an additional dose of experience and patience, started the fight strong. He appeared fully aware of the champion's profound boxing IQ and ability to spot patterns in a fight, and therefore mixed up his attacks in unpredictable spurts to offset Crawford's rhythm. I like what Porter's doing now. He's marching forward, but he's changing his rhythm, changing slots, moving his head, coming high behind the double jab. And when he gets close, he's letting his hands go. But by the middle portion of the fight, the resourceful champion had downloaded enough data to make the necessary adjustments and take control. And now sharpshooting to the head is Crawford. Switching over to his southpaw stance, he began landing the crisper, harder shots to both the body and upstairs. The challenger's well-revised game plan, unfortunately, was already expiring. And quickly running out of answers, Porter reverted back to type and lunged into an expertly placed counter uppercut. The body punches. 28, and there is the knockdown scored in round 10 by the champ. Sticking true to his fierce reputation as one of the best finishers in boxing, Crawford sensed the depleted resistance from the challenger to force another knockdown and the intervention from his corner. That's it. That's it. a frighteningly impressive performance. And by doing what Errol Spence, Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman failed to do, Crawford was crushing the false narrative that he was unproven against the best welterweights. Errol Spence was right there watching this fight. As soon as this stoppage happened, he walked out. What was your message to Errol Spence tonight? You see what I did, you know, compared to what he did. Maybe if Spence get his tail out his butt, he'll fight me. With Errol Spence just four months later picking up the third notch in his welterweight crown, the Texan had concluded his mission to eliminate all of the nearest competitors within his promotional stable. And as such, the pressure was now mounting on both fighters to finally come to an agreement. Do you think you need a Terrence Crawford fight to legitimize your, your career? Everybody needs that legacy fight. It, might, it could be Terrence Crawford, it could be Keith Thurman, or it could be somebody else later on down the road. Who knows? But with four consecutive successful box office fights, it was undeniable that Spence held the commercial edge at the negotiation table. It don't matter. Last time Crawford fought on pay-per-view, he did 100,000 buys. It is what it is. We worry about Crawford when we get there. But like I said, Crawford need me more than I need him. And for all of Crawford's brilliance, his marketability plateaued during his three-year embargo, leaving him no option but to comply with his rival's demands to cross the promotional divide. I'm pretty sure <clears throat> my decision is made already. Bob couldn't secure me the Spence fight when I was with him. So how are you going to secure me to Spence fight when I'm not with him? So, With his long-term promoter now out of the equation, the lengthy negotiation process finally began in the summer of 2022, with plans to stage the fight in the latter part of the year. The complications and risks, however, of crossing over to a rival's territory and staging the event were too big to ignore. From the perspective of Team Crawford, the reassurances they required in creating a fair deal were not met. And much to the frustrations of the boxing world, the negotiations predictably fell through. In the red corner, the defending world champion, Terence Crawford. Crawford, in the meantime, took an opportunity to remain active in a voluntary defense against the hard-punching David Avanesian. Another comprehensive knockout victory to make boxing audiences salivate even more for the dream welterweight fight they'd long been demanding. The whole of boxing world's waiting. Is Errol Spence next? I'm a free agent. You know, like I said before, you know, we can go to the drawing board and these big uh, fights come about in the near future. Their hopes in spring of 2023 would eventually be given a new lease of life when reports emerged of the two fighters holding personal conversations 
in a fresh attempt to revive the fight. This time, with the removal of promoters and managers that can so often complicate proceedings, an air of optimism was finally emanating from both camps. You and Errol Spence, what's stopping it? Nothing. That's the next fight for me and him. The two champions clearly wanted the fight. And on the 25th of May, 2023, both men took to their social media to officially announce their undisputed clash that will take place at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. I'm sitting here telling you that right now. That's the next fight for me and him, and I'm going to show the world, you know, why Terrence Crawford ain't been able to get those big marquee fights. Far too often than it should, boxing follows its self-destructive nature and robs itself of the greatness its occupants can deliver. The most notable of examples in recent times also featured two larger-than-life welterweights, both of whom shelved their showdown to a later date and offered only the scraps of what should have been. But in Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford, boxing audiences are presented with a rare moment where the sport finally gets it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, grab it again, hey, son. Up, I, grab it again. Way, and unlike the aforementioned, both of these elite combatants are at the peak of their powers, guaranteeing fans the very best versions of themselves to create what can only be an explosive clash of styles. Errol Spence's renowned reputation for unrelenting assaults as the fight gathers momentum will be met with Terence Crawford's ingrained obligation for a confrontation. This means that the typical cagey affair that often materializes between two highly skilled operators will serve only for a limited period. At some point down the stretch, a war will break out. And everybody get bro, we're gonna break him, man. We're gonna break him like a horse. For the Texan, this is the script he hopes will unfold on July 29th. The advantages he holds in size, strength and power could secure him the legacy-defining victory he has promised his fans all along. But as impressive as his welterweight scalps have been thus far, none have come close to possessing the X-factor of Terence Bud Crawford. Crawford has become an American star. Regarded by many to be the greatest fighter in the world today, the Omaha native relishes the opportunity to finally square off against an opponent of equal standing. A showdown to truly test a set of abilities found only in the legends of the past. The prolonged negotiations almost derailed the careers of the two best 147 pounders on the planet. But their burning desires to prove their worth will now allow history to be made as boxing's first ever undisputed welterweight champion in the four belt era will finally be determined.